اللهم كبير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم وعيري لما قبلوا عليهم بل الله 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 كبير Again, we are here and we are privileged with this uh, moment that we have and this time that we have that we can spend uh, contacting our Creator and, and grow our souls and make a better person out of ourselves and get closer to God. And so this is a huge, uh, uh, huge blessing for all of us and we should be uh, eternally grateful to God for, for having this uh, forum today that we have and this is not by accident, this is by divine design, and God has given us security, and He has given us peace of mind, so um, <clears throat> we are able to do this without any interference or uh, any uh, fear from anything. So God has uh, given us this, uh, this moment and this, uh, this period of time, and we are honored and we are privileged uh, to have it, and so we should be grateful to the source of um, this blessing that we have today and uh, again this is not by accident this is by divine design and, and providence and so and we should be uh, again as I said uh, eternally grateful to God for for giving us this uh, this uh, few minutes that we have in the weekend should be really the highlight of our week and so we spend it with God and, as I said, make contact with him and, and grow our souls and, uh, and become better persons, become better servants of God and get closer to him. Uh, again, gratefulness and <clears throat> appreciativeness is about like quality and, and we, should, uh, we should always strive uh, in the cause of God and we should strive to get closer to him and be more grateful to him for everything that he's given us. And, uh, we're not able to do that, and so we have to ask God to to force us to to be grateful to Him, and He's He's going to help us, and so we'll become better people. Um, <clears throat> okay, so today today what I just want I just want to chat with you and and uh, and glorify and praise God, and, uh, and so uh, we are we are here and we are again as I said is is an honor for us, and um, and so. And God has has overlooked many of our sins. Okay, and God says in the case of in the case of in the case of excess, which means equivalence. And God says that He has He has decreed uh, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, a nose for a nose, an equ equivalent. Uh, retribution or punishment for an equivalent injury or crime. Okay, so, and then God elaborates on that, and He says that if someone pardons, okay, and that's amazing. Okay, and if somebody does that, then God says that He is going to redeem His bad deeds. Okay, all of us have bad deeds. Okay. So this is a vehicle by which okay, the idea of, in this country they call it Hatfields and McCoys, okay, tit for tat. It's going to stop. Okay. And on the other hand, the bad deeds that that person who is forgiving is going to be redeemed. That's amazing. Okay, That's who God is. Okay. So now look at look at your own thing. Look at your own life. How many bad deeds did we do? And God overlooked them. Okay. We were mean and harsh to the fatherless. We reprimanded the beggar. Okay. We said, why doesn't he go and get a job? And God overlooked that. God forgave us for that. We were mean to an animal. And God overlooked it. 
We did things we were not supposed to do. We broke God's commandments. We lied. We cheated. And God forgave that. And God overlooked that mistake that we made. That error that we made in our lives. Okay. So those sins that we committed, God overlooked them. Okay. And he says, now you should do the same thing. Remember Moses committed manslaughter? Okay. There are so many, there are so many um, lessons in that occasion that God is historically narrated to us about the story of Moses. Okay. God says, I cited all kinds of examples in this book. But the human being is the most argumentative creature. 1854. Okay. Not 1984. Chapter 18, verse 54. Okay. So there are so many examples in there. He tells us he killed this guy with one punch. Big guy. Okay. So he's he's a strong man. Okay. He describes, it's like a movie. Okay. He was a guy who was losing his temper very fast. And he had stuttering problems. That's actually what Pharaoh accused him. He can hardly speak. Look at this guy. <clears throat> and he says it himself. He said, yeah, I'll put this guy as my assistant. He's more eloquent than I am. And my, my tongue gets tied. Okay? So many things in there. And he was very sad when he did that. He was really sorry he did that, and God knew that. And he asked God to make him cool his temper. That's what he says. So many lessons in that few words that God is saying in them. Say, you know, we don't pay attention, but he forgives. He overlooks. Remember last week we were talking about the idea that it says that the vision is going to be like iron? And we'll remember everything. One of the things that God's mercy and his infinite grace has bestowed upon us in this world, that we don't remember what death was like. See that? We're going to know it. He said, they do not remember except the, the first death. Okay? How bad it was. But now, you imagine those people who are making wrong decisions and performing wrong deeds and disobeying God's commandments. Okay? They are going to remember all of those all the minutiae of those things, they're going to remember it. And they're going to see it. It's like a replay from all vantage points. They're going to see it. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the torment like that for eternity? And they will mean to somebody and that's going to come back. And they're going to remember that. Okay. So God says now, now he goes, he goes well beyond that. And he says, look, 
All you have to, to do is that I know you did all of those wrong things. I know that. I know you reprimanded the beggar. I know that. Now all you have to do is that you have to change your ways and that changing ways is called repentance. It means you're not going to do that anymore. Okay? And now what happens is that that incident that you did, Reprimand the beggar, is not there anymore. It's gone. It's actually, it's actually going to change into a charity case. If you didn't do that, you just gave him some money. Can you imagine that? The past mistakes that you made are gone. They're not there. This is who God is. And that's the hope that we should have. As I said, in people's calculus, God does not exist. Okay? A lot of people, they think that they can resolve issues by themselves. It doesn't work that way. God advocates peace. He is the peace. That's one of his names. He doesn't advocate war. There are rules to war. And he stipulates them. Okay. Well, they did this to us. So we have to go through this. Okay. No. You can forgive. And what's going to happen to you then? You think you're going to lose? No. You are the winner. If somebody inflicts injury upon you, you should forgive and forget. Why? Because God is on your side now. You are making God happy. Not this person or that person or this country or that country or this kind of, you know, uh, organization or your boss. No, you are making God happy because God prefers that. And God will be on your side, and He will provide for you, and He will be the one who's going to rescue you and give you security. Okay? So, in the behavior that we have in this world, in the understandings that we have in this world, okay, God is not in our calculus. We don't even think about it. But that is a reality, and people miss it. And that's why we have the problems that we have in this worldly life. Because we don't think about it. Okay? And there is a reason that God said this. And this has been in other scriptures too. It's not just unique to the Quran. Okay? Is Jesus and Muhammad and all these people came, they didn't come to abrogate the laws that were said before them. No. They came to fulfill those laws. Those are God's commandments and they have to be fulfilled and people were not fulfilling them. God told them not to lie and they lied. God told them not to commit adultery and they did. God told them not to bear false witness, and they did bring false witness. And above all, God says that, La ilaha illallah. The most potent statement from God, most linguistically correct and to the point. Okay? And if you don't believe me, ask a linguist. They will tell you, La ilaha illallah is the most concise and the most correct grammatically in everything of all phrases. Okay? And that was the first commandment. And I bet you it was just like that. But they changed it. Thou shalt not have any other God beside me. Okay?
And so if we do not gravitate towards these things, and above all, as I said, do not worship God alone, then the entire basis of this structure is bound to fail. And we are going to do the other things over and over again without any compunction. Okay, we are not going to even think about it. As though we are entitled to lie. Okay, we are not. We are entitled to gossip. We are entitled to spy. And God says, don't do that. Okay. And you can see the failure of these so-called espionage organizations. They fail left and right. They don't have the information. Why don't they have the information? Because God told them, don't do that, and they did it. And it did not pay off. It backfired. They missed things because they were doing the wrong thing. And as I said, God is not in their calculus. Well, if we don't do this, this is what's going to... No, it's not, because God is on your side. Okay? God will plan it the way that it will bring security to you. You don't need that organization. Whatever you may call it in every different countries. Okay? That's not going to save you. God is the one who's going to save you. Okay. So this is a few things I wanted to chat with you and talk about it. And this is this is the beauty of it. And this is this this God says, you know, uh, that to him belongs the most beautiful names. And so we we enjoy it. I enjoy talking about this and I hope that you enjoy listening to it. And so we'll we'll praise God and then we'll finish this unit. Allahu Kabir. Okay.